how many people come in and they the kipping pull up and then the next thing you know there's all kinds of issues going on it's like well if we can learn how to stabilize the shoulder if you can the number of people that when you get them on a bar and it's part of our assessment process just hanging from a bar like a bilateral bar hang if you can't engage your lats doing scap pull-ups you should never do a kipping pull-up mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson. <laughs> and uh, we're here with uh, Dr. Teresa Larson and Anders Varner. Yeah. Drinking solo cups Cheers. in the morning. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. What is yeah. in those cups? <laughs> mm. Drugs? Would she like to know? <laughs> yeah. Liquid. Coffee, yeah. coffee. Liquid stuff. Did Are you get that in Vegas? Uh, uh, no. Maybe maybe this was made in Vegas, this tea bag. But <laughs> I doubt it. I seriously <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> Uh, it's good. It's good to keep cool. help me with my voice today. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So, Teresa's got a little bit of a frog in her throat. She says, "I just we'll work it out." Smoked a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for recovery. And yelled for a day. There you it's go. A good, it's a good start to yeah. your morning. <laughs> voice lessons. I heard you were taking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna be talking about the shoulder. Uh, you know, the all the things. People. People's shoulders are hurting all the time pretty regular I, I, it's most time when i walk yeah. in a gym there's somebody having to do something for their shoulder yes very very common uh we're going to get into you know why that is and uh, i'm curious as to the things we should be like are there tests we can do and uh th maybe some movements we should be avoiding until we fix some things yeah you know? yeah there are lots of things that we can do for the shoulder <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys are our rehab specialists so to speak yeah, yeah. T, you're a, you're a physical therapist. You yes. guys have both been on the show a couple of times. We, we did a low back episode. Yes. That was episode 240. We did a, a knee episode. That was episode 292. And now, yeah. we're, now we're talking shoulders. So uh, so briefly, even though you've been on the show before, you know, give us give us your background just for people that haven't haven't been introduced to you guys yet. If you want more information, of course, go back to those other, other two shows and get more details. But just just briefly, who are, who are you guys? Uh, so Super we, brief. We are, yeah. <laughs> We are ninjas, basically. Yes, yes. We could go with that. Uh, so we worked together. Coach Anders and I started working together a few years ago. Um, I met him uh, when I was just doing movement RX stuff as a PT in his gym at San Diego Athletics. And <clears throat> we were doing similar things. He was helping people rehab their backs, shoulders, knees downstairs. And I was doing the actual PT on them upstairs. So he was doing more of the movement-based stuff. And I was getting people from injury to getting back into the gym, and then he was taking them yeah. from there. So we're like, why don't we combine efforts and actually try to work with a lot of people? Oh, thank God. And yeah, no, so I mean, that, it's been that, nice. That's, that's been a that's been a problem in the industry for a long time. Is you get hurt, you go to PT, but then you end up with a trainer who doesn't understand yeah. what's going on, and you don't have a PT well, that understands what's happening. Yeah, strength training and it goes both ways, and it gets crazy. There's not a lot of good communication back and forth, and it's, that's the really cool part about the Movement RX practice, and then. We turned it into this online platform, Your Movement Prescription, which is Your Movement. So it's the the low back, knee, shoulder fix programs that we've created. Um, but it's been cool to like actually combine efforts, uh, communicate about things because we really are on the same page, and rarely that happens. Like me talking to fellow PTs that I went to school with, or other yeah, strength coaches. PTs and the yeah. strength coaches normally hate each other. Well, and Not PTs are, <laughs> yeah. a lot of times PTs look at me like, why would you want to go online? Or why would you want to create programs for people like when you can do one-on-one? -on -one? I'm like, well, y there's <laughs> the potential are of you, helping. Are you thinking the other way around? You're like, why would you work one-on-one -on -one right. when you could work with many? Yes. Yeah. No, and it's opened my eyes, though, to the fact of this like great wide world of reaching more people with the knowledge we have. We're both movement specialists. Um, background for me is a former Marine. Like I worked in the Marine Corps. No one ever teaches you movement in the Marine Corps. I was a collegiate athlete, a professional athlete. Like not once was I really taught good movement. And mm -hmm. then finally, not even in PT school, 
watching some of my professors move, I was like, oh, damn, okay, this we need some help. Um, getting out of PT school, starting to work with Mobility Watt and Kelly Starad, and getting in this group of people that like are studying movement are not, and they're like kind of ahead of the research. Yeah. Like, I realized, okay, this is the area I want to be in, start nice. my own thing. I want to help veterans. I want to help military. I want to help anyone that freaking wants to get better. And that's anywhere from in the gym to someone who does fucking Zumba. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't care. As long as you want to get better, you're, you're going to help. You're, I'm going to help you fix you, yeah. basically. That's, that's a big deal. I mean, uh, a lot of people end up in an academic route, and they end up just taking the next job and this kind of thing. But uh, what, I, what I've been investigating when I talk to people is, you know, when you're taking advice from somebody on life track, career track, yeah. what do they look like? And you're saying, oh, your professor's didn't move well no, no, and no. so it's you know why why you know if I'm going to be learning something from somebody and I've learned you know, yeah I've learned the hard way a couple times where I took advice from somebody who w didn't have like you know maybe you should look at this like this and then I look like I'll ask for relationship advice from someone who doesn't have the relationship you know it's not oh, yeah. bad but I was like actually I don't want my relationship to look like their relationship yeah, yeah. considering so. the source like it's right. it's a you know I, I I think from the Marine Corps too I there's that experience of like why go in the Marine Corps as a woman or anyone if you don't want to be physically fit and be part of the best right. and, like, set an example? Why go in? Why be a PT or a strength coach if you don't walk your talk? GI, why? GI Bill mostly for no, – <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, but, like, why would you – why would I want to go into a profession where people are looking at the way you move totally. and the way you look, right? It's not all about facade. It's about how you treat others as well. But, like, part of it, how you, how you treat yourself internally – shows on the outside mm -hmm. so like you know I, it boggles my mind why there's strength coaches and pts out there who aren't fit but i digress anders i am so she just took over all, she, you're good uh, first of all, my voice is like but the but the but you gift just crushed it. of um, <laughs> doing going. like trying to search Show for different like, answers yeah. i meet someone like him the Teresa you guys Wayne. like where you're on the, you're kind of above the research. You're already doing things that are probably going to be researched in five years, ten years. You're right, above, We're the, above research. the research. We're above the research. You still, <laughs> so, you know, I've been, I've been thinking that for a while, but I haven't said it out loud. <laughs> somebody <laughs> finally is, did. Now not, a doctor has signed off on you. Yeah. That's huge. Not everything I'm is. I'm printing in off research. a certificate for you to sign later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was, I've been able to meet people who are like trying things, testing things and not just waiting for a fucking cohort study to come out. Like, well, waiting for research to come out, it's like waiting for permission right. to take action. Yeah, right. If you long, only yeah. take action on the things that have been researched, guess what you are? Normal. Right. Mm. Who the fuck? Who wants to be the worst normal. thing to be. So, yeah. Those so people. <laughs> Coach you don't want to be that. Is not normal. <laughs> like Mark Bessel, I'd rather be dead than normal yeah. or dead than average or something yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we met – I don't even know what year you came in. Was it, like, 2012, something like that? But I – through my time as an athlete, so I competed at regionals four times. We, My gym put, like, 70-plus people into the regional, a couple people into the games. Um, had some really awesome training partners in my life. I trained with John Cena for three and a half years. My new partner, training partner, Mr. Doug Larson. Yeah, yeah. That guy knows everything. Yeah. Um, he knows what I would consider to be too much. He, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's a bird. He's a walking. <laughs> <It's a laughs> he's a walking encyclopedia. Too movement. much stuff up there. Yeah. Um, but we're, I've been really we're lucky. Great training partners. Yeah, well. I, yeah, I've been really lucky to train with people that are kind of at really the precipice of like either the knowledge, the strength. They've been around the game so long, and I've had really great conversations. Um, in owning a gym for six years, I really started to notice someone would be upstairs working with Teresa. They would get these like corrective exercises or she would teach them how to move and then they'd come downstairs and it'd be three, two, one, go. And now we've got problems again. All of the things that mm. they were working on upstairs, there was no path to get back to performance. It was, we're in the PT office. I have these things that I need to do and now I'm going to go downstairs and perform because I should be fixed. Well, you're not fixed because we never really hardwired the movement patterns into our body and before we start sprinkling intensity and load and all these performance pieces into what you're doing in the gym or in life, why aren't, why isn't there a, a, an easier path or a much more methodical way to get back to that performance piece? So we started putting our brains together. It's probably a good year and a half of us throwing out crazy random ideas. And finally one day I was like, Hey, let's just write some programs. And, um, 
it's been it's been incredible the the numbers that come back on the programs um yeah. whether it's in a group setting whether it's one on one uh the the programs work and it's all stemming from this these three pieces that we've put together um getting people back to their breath slowing their nervous system down teaching them the most basic functional movements of just can you breathe properly stabilize your core getting into finding imbalances in the body working those things out and then creating some behavior change in that people are present enough to recognize I'm not healthy right now. Let's do things that are going to make us healthy or I am healthy. How do I enter some sort of performance setting so that I'm not going to jack myself up? Yeah. It seems like you guys are always attacking root causes. Like yeah. a lot of people, they, they look at what superficially is wrong. My, my shoulder hurts, and then they focus on the shoulder, the shoulder, the shoulder. And it's been very common, not not just with y'all, but just industry-wide. People are recognizing that that's not an effective approach. And a lot of times people, they they kind of have to focus on that because from the perspective of the person that's hurt, they say, my shoulder hurts, so focus on my shoulder. And they feel yeah. good, like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. He's paying attention to where I hurt. Yeah. But you kind of got to play both sides of that fence where – you got to give the person what they want. If their shoulder hurts, you got to talk about their shoulder because that's what they came to you for. But then at the same time, you might know as, as a practitioner that it's not all about the shoulder. There's these other deeper reasons that this person's shoulder might be hurting. So you, yes. have, to, you have to attack it at two levels. It's yeah. actually the one of the biggest reasons we started working together. There was many things leading up to it, but I one day just had this like gnarly shoulder pain and hot, hot, just radiating through my arm and I must have spent the entire <laughs> night like my wife was out of town and I was just like you know what me and this lacrosse ball are going to war right now like we're gonna <laughs> fix this shoulder problem right now and the next day she was interviewing somebody and my shoulder still jacked up an hour on the lacrosse ball later and she was like um you don't have a shoulder problem I just want to let you know you have like a a breathing and a neck problem and uh, i was like oh problem. i was like she knows things we need to take this to mm. a lot more people mm. um nice. and, and the, getting, the lady getting, worked with you the interview, yeah the she went lady. into an interview thinking she was going to just come in and do like a regular diagnosis i was like no i have a neck problem it's bad she just walked into a yeah. shit storm of problems she um, didn't make it. Tough interview. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but that was that was probably the, the final turning point of, man, we really need to consolidate this information and make it simpler so we can get down to what are the principles that are causing these problems and how do we kind of fix that from a systemic level, get mm -hmm. down to the root cause, and then we can start layering the movement patterns yeah, so on top. Let's get, let's get into those root causes before we do that. We're going to mention – some people that support the show. Okay. Yeah, we got Organifi. Woo! Which Love it. Me <laughs> mentioned them before the show. Yeah. Yeah, you like. You Tell me about good. Organifi. Organifi was delicious. We had some at Wait. your house the other day. What's delicious about it? Is it a brownie format? The red what? one is super delicious. The red, one. the red one's the best one. The red juice? Red juice is sure. delicious. Red juice. Green so They green started juice. with green juice, but yeah. now they have a bunch of other ones. So. Nice. Green juice, just because of the color, makes you feel good. It has all the things, <laughs> but That's because true. it's green, it's like... When you go to Whole Foods and you buy like a nine dollar smoothie, you're like, "Why am I buying this? It's green. It's got to be delicious." Totally. But they, it, it's if, got if all it's green the in the name. It just implies that it's healthy yeah. for you. For it's sure. Got, it's got all the makes things. you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Right color, tastes delicious. <laughs> I like green stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me more about this juice. I, it's just really good. What is? Yeah. It? I mean, what is? What is the green stuff taste? Superfood. Like? Uh, super yeah, it, they okay. load it up with a so bunch of like fruit. greens. Okay. Like, they, they dry the greens, they crush them up, whatever. I don't know how okay. the process actually works. But um, they also have some adaptogen uh, adaptogens in there, like ashwagandha and stuff like that. So if anyone's okay. experiencing any kind of stress and you're consuming that during the day, it's going to help okay. your body manage that much better. Um, so it's just general greens. That okay. Most Got people it. need more of that in their body. Yes. But... Uh, I use it when I travel a lot because when you uh, you guys travel and then yeah. you end up eating shitty yeah. food for yeah. days on end. Mm. That's a good idea. That's actually a really good idea because some places, some countries you go to, you can't have easy access to. Countries, I go to certain states yeah. and I can't well, find organic sure. vegetation. Like organic produce is hard to come by, so it's like yeah. it's good to have that in your cupboard. Yeah. Um, and I like starting off with something like that in the beginning of the day because then I just feel good about the rest of the stuff yeah. I ate that day. Yeah. Now I can do whatever the fuck I want. No, okay. but, um, <laughs> well, you've convinced me that I'm going to try it. I will get you some, some okay. green juice. Yeah. Um, they make a bunch of other stuff too, but yeah, okay. check it out. And then um, our other friends, it's Thrive Market, which <laughs> Ooh, sounds like I love Thrive Market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have so many good things. And you know, one of the acupuncturists I work with, 
Jayla, our friend, turned me on to it, and I order stuff once a month at least. The they have like all the coolest, like or the latest things, gluten free or just alternative options for food that yeah. people have dietary needs. Um, we all do. We all should be limited and <laughs> you know, sugar, just the people with dietary intake. needs. <laughs> no, but like, I was like if you live in SoCal and like, and there's a Whole Foods like yeah. on every street corner, then it, maybe Drive maybe market. maybe you don't need it quite as much as someone who lives in an area like you just said, like other parts of right. the country where you can't get totally. or organic, gluten free, or, or whatever you're looking for, like. Having a, a convenient place online where everything on on that site it's is healthy is, awesome. is really really convenient. I uh, you'll I've save money if you're doing Whole Foods versus Thrive. Yeah, yeah, it's cheaper in Whole Foods in a lot of cases. No, exactly. I was gonna say yep. even if if you are a Whole Foods shopper, I would consider checking out Thrive anyway. Um, I bought like huge things of ghee on there. Mm. Coconut um, mana. Yeah, is coconut delicious. flour, almond flour. Just eat uh, it with a spoon. Plantain chips. I think I ordered like 20 boxes of plantain chips. <laughs> my, my husband was like, why do we need all these plantain chips? I'm like, snacks. It's all snacks. She's going to end up stealing our sponsorship. She's yeah. just going to be like, oh, Thrive's like, we don't need Barbell Shrugs. It's <laughs> Teresa <laughs> Larson. It yeah. is. Uh, I really do enjoy. I like also, I hate shopping in a store. I'll tell you that. Like I hate going to the store, mar- partly because people like, I you don't know what really. your problem is? What? You're going to the store, the store sober. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You know, <laughs> this is a problem with life in general. Like okay. Just doing life sober is just not as fun as the other alternatives. <laughs> when you shop on Thrive Market, it is enjoyable for yeah. the introverted shopper. Like you don't have to be wow, around. there it is. Tagline for them. You yeah. don't have to be around people. You can like shop and see what's going on. Hey, hey people, Thrive Market. I'm scared of people. <laughs> yeah. Go to Thrive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. I just don't like that many people. That's the thing. It's yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. So yeah. let's, let's dig back into the shoulder. So, yeah. so for someone, <laughs> for someone who doesn't, they don't have a background in physical therapy or, yeah. or in movement anatomy, et cetera. Like how would someone's neck and someone's breathing patterns make their shoulder hurt? And like, how, how would it fix their shoulder pain by, by attacking those problems, you know, kind of above and below, so to speak. Uh, so starting with the neck, so above and below joints are, you look at the scapula. So the scapula muscle is that wing bone, chicken wing, that's the, stabili- that's, the, that's the area that needs stability. The shoulder needs mobility. It's a mobility joint. Mm-hmm. The neck needs stability, and that thoracic spine, that mid-back needs uh, mobility. So if the shoulder is experiencing pain, you have to look at you know, the other joints around it. So the neck is the first one usually um, because you know, when you just look at our culture, we sit a lot. And even if we don't sit a lot, we end up having, because of gravity, you know, just forward head postures over time. So mm-hmm. for, you know, all of us right now probably have about a 15 degree, maybe not Doug, Doug's, but 15, 15 degree uh, uh, forward head position. So on the C, on C7, T1, the, that upper neck. I just want to know who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but that you have for, for that 15 degree forward head, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. which is slight, like that's 15 pounds of pressure going into your spine, upper mm-hmm. spine to the lower spine. Mm-hmm. So those paraspinals are always turned on. So your, te- your head weighs about 10, 11 pounds, maybe if you have a really big head, you know. I don't duck, have a big head. Duck. I have a really small head. My, my son has a big head. <laughs> I think his will be like 20 pounds. No, <laughs> uh, Magnus. Uh, so anyway, but as you go forward, like think about like how we sit at a computer and work over time or text. Look at people texting is a great example. You know, most people look down at their phone. It's a 60 degree, you know, 60 degree uh, angle of the head. That's 60 pounds of pressure that's going into your spine. So what happens is that spine has to work really hard to hold the neck up. And it's, you know, if you're like this a lot of the day or like this a lot of the day, your spine's working really hard. So it gets stiff. It gets really stiff in that thoracic spine. So mm-hmm. if you guys all like hunch your shoulders right now, kind of lean forward, hunch your shoulders. Now try to bring your arms ah. over your head. Like, if you go and lift like that, right, and dri- drive your arms overhead, if, even if you don't lift, you just have to, like, reach for the ca- something in the cabinet enough times, well, eventually your shoulder's going to hurt. Like, even totally. that 15 <coughs> degrees forward of forward head is going to cause problems in that thoracic spine, which is going to eventually cause problems in the shoulder. Because what happens is the shoulders, the back of the shoulders become weak from that forward head. The front of the shoulders become tight, 
right? And so eventually that will limit your overhead position. That'll limit your So it's your not int- from too much bench press. <laughs> well, it's from too much texting. No, it, no, it's from just too much like poor positioning throughout the day. Mm-hmm. It's not so much the things you do in the gym, it's the things, the way you live outside of the gym. So the fact that you're in a sedentary position and you're not using your full range of motion in your arms until you go to the gym, right? Or your head, like your head position is not in a good position. Like it's forward and you're not, you know, you're technically a good posture is ears are in line with that AC joint, you know, bone on the side of your shoulder, which is in line with your hip joint, which is in line with your knee, which is in line with your uh, <laughs> lateral malleolus. So, like, I there's an alignment handled. issue. So if you guys all <laughs> go, go, go stand next to a wall, put your heels against the wall, make sure your butt is touching, roll those shoulder blades back, and where does your head sit? Does it sit an inch forward? Most likely. Everyone I test notoriously has got, like, a f- about an inch forward on that wall. So they're not completely aligned. And that just happens over time. And so constantly being reminded of, okay, tuck that chin back, roll those shoulder blades back. Those, that's a simple fix that you can do in your day. Just more awareness. So for someone that none of us are going to stop texting as an example, yeah. like how do you, how do you, you. fix, you just, you just put the phone right in front yeah. of your face and just text like this? Yeah. You can also, Talk text. you can also squat yep. down, use your range of motion, squat Ooh. down, put the phone in front of your face. Like this. Yeah, but then people are going to think I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I think people are yeah, going to do that, 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 random happening. people in the population just think I'm pooping, like, <laughs> everywhere I go. Yeah, yeah. I'm just in a no. full squat in the middle of the mall. Yeah. Well, I, once we get the – Elon Musk gets us the, the neural net, then this won't be a problem anymore. I don't even know what neural net is. Ah, oh, it's where you – they're going to put something for all brain, of our brains are synced. And then you're oh. going to uh, sync up to the cloud, okay. and then you really just I, – Feelings, I'll be able to, emotions, I'll be able to, all of it just I'll be able to think to you. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I like that. that we, we can be, do oh, that. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> – So, but, but, okay, going back to the already. neck. So <laughs> <laughs> text, all right, we're not the neural net yet. Sorry. Texting <laughs> is just an example, but just poor neck, like – from not using, when we rotate, we should be rotating our neck. Like our neck is a rotator, right? But oftentimes when people move and like look in their car behind themselves, behind themselves, when people look around, they're like turning their whole body. That used to be me. So you're not you're like, doing both at the same time? Huh? Sorry. Turning your whole body and neck? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to look behind you, like you're going you're to yeah, be twisting Yeah, you should be doing both. But globally. oftentimes people just, if they've ever hurt their neck or their shoulder, like mm. they'll start to compensate by moving the whole system together and not moving their neck. It's like, right? It could be a problem. Your neck's stiff, your thoracic spine is stiff, and now you're like twisting at your, well, thora- at your lumbar. Well, oftentimes the neck is stiff due to that thoracic spine, mm-hmm. like being really oh, gotcha. stiff. So with the forward head, right, it puts more pressure on that T-spine and those paraspinals, so then it gets stiff. And then you're starting to miss rotation. You're able. You're starting to miss that extension, mm-hmm. that flexion in that thoracic. So then you're breathing. What happens to your breathing? In conjunction with all this, it's very shallow. Oftentimes, we are breathing shallow. I think, you know, probably from the age of when you're starting to walk to sitting more, you start to breathe more into your chest. We should all be belly breathing, like, right, breathing into our belly first, then chest. I mean, you're breathing into your chest at the same time. But, like, the oftentimes we're breathing just up here and not low. Like, if you look at a baby, like, they're breathing into their belly, and then their chest rises. Belly rises first, then chest. We are all you know, most of us are up here. So we can, and that happens from just becoming sedentary and sitting. Like it probably happens. I would be interested to watch my son. I hope he's in a standing desk school, but if I can help create that revolution that the start started up North, but it's uh, a, something that is become a problem. So when you have a shallow breathing pattern, plus you have a limited thoracic flexion, extension, rotation, which people don't even realize because you know, they're turning their neck, but then they realize their thoracic spine isn't, all, isn't rotating too. Their low back is rotating. Mm-hmm. Their low back shouldn't be a rotator. It should be that chest and mm-hmm. neck. Um, then shallow breathing on top of, you know, forward head, on top of stiff thoracic spine. Uh, where's the pain? It's going to be in your shoulders. That's where you're going to feel it. And that's because the shoulder joint, I mean, the shoulder joint is a, a mobile joint. Uh, it's like a freaking plunger joint. So the shoulder sits on the labrum like a plunger. It's, I mean, I was a softball pitcher, so my arm can go three, it can go 360 degrees. That's unlike any other joint. Like, your hips can't do that unless you're a freaking, what's the ladies that dance in New York for the holiday? I'm the Nutcracker. The Not rockets. the Nutcracker, yeah. The Rockout. They, uh. might, they might have hips that can do the whole yeah. 360, but. Um, <laughs> I've met some contortionists in my day. Of course, yeah. I figured. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but the thing is that shoulder joint, like, 
once you start having limited movement in that mid back, your neck starts to get stiff, your breathing patterns are shallow, then the muscles of the front of the shoulder are gonna be tight, and that shoulder joint no longer becomes as, as mobile as it should be, and so when you take your arms overhead, it's limited, but you're still pressing weight overhead, but you th you're, you're pushing into range you don't have, and so what happens, the front of the joint starts to bother you, the top of the joint starts to bother you, and then maybe even the back of the, back of the shoulder over time. And then eventually, it kind of rides up into the neck. Oftentimes, people that come to see me who've mm -hmm. let it go for a long time are like, yeah, it started here, but now my neck hurts, and now mm -hmm. my mid-back hurts. Oh, and my left foot. And I'm like, okay, well. That, w that was me <laughs> at one point, yeah. I, I've seen you for, I don't remember if I saw you for your neck. No, I mean, oh, I've, been, I, I, this, uh, I've been working on my, well, consciously, uh, yeah. you know, repairing this body for about three and a half years. So... Yes. yes. We I, were together I, on that journey for yeah, a while. Right? Yeah, we were on, on that together. Yeah, the breathing was, journey. Like bre right. breath, shoulder, neck, yeah. knee. Like it's like it was just all, all of it. Sh it all goes together. I mean, honestly, people have come to me and say I have a shoulder issue. So, okay, we talked about the neck. We talked about the thoracic scapula. That scapula wing bone, right? If you're forward shoulder, now you have a tilting scapula, right? The, the scapula should tilt a little bit but not a lot, right? When we bring our arms overhead, it should slide and glide pretty easy. And when you have shoulder issues, that starts to feel crunchy. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, that's a complaint I get mm. from people. Well, <clears throat> getting that shoulder in place allows that scapula to slide and glide, but you gotta also loosen up the muscles around it and start to strengthen the muscles around mm -hmm. it. So oftentimes, they feel ropey because they're working really hard to pull you into good posture that you're not, lis you're not listening, yeah. right? Right. Um, but well, is it, are, are these muscles doing things that they're not really designed to do when you get into poor posture? So they're, they're, um, so the scapula muscles, some of the bigger ones like teres major, not teres minor, but teres major, the rhomboids, those are big movers, like the lats are big movers. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes because of the forward shoulder, they become weak. Like if you're doing like, let's say a Murph or some like really long Metcon, or a lot of reps of something. Well, those muscles are gonna tire, depending on how fit you are. Um, those muscles are gonna tire, and then what happens is the rotator cuff muscles that aren't supposed to be big movers, they're supposed to be postural stabilizers, that are actually now not working efficiently because you have a forward shoulder, are going to start to have experience pain or tear, or strain or sprain or whatever. Um, strain a muscle, sprain a ligament, right? You're gonna, those are gonna become uh, problematic because you've just overworked muscles that have become weak from poor posture, and now you've hurt the rotator cuff, which is a postural support muscle. Does that make sense? 100%. Okay. I think the other thing is people need to realize that the movement pattern is your body's designed to do that. So the head forward thing, it's not some thing that was just invented because cell phones were invented. Like you've been able okay. to look down. It's the fact that you're practicing that movement all, all day, day long. And most of the time, we're <coughs> taking that position on in a seated position. So we're not able to release the stress. So if you're in the gym, we're taking all that stress on, but we're able to release it through the exercise. When you're in an office, you're here. You're stuck. And mm -hmm. there's no physical release. There's nothing to get that stress out of our body. So we create tension in this forward shoulder, forward head. And now all of a sudden we're adding tension, we're adding stress, there's no release, and then we get stuck in this position. And the only time we're able to start to release that is we go to the gym and now it's clean and jerk day and you're trying to catch a barbell and your arm won't go up. So what happens? We, you know, tight thoracic, right. yeah. there's neck issues. I think it's a good point. You're experiencing stress while being in a constant posture yeah. yes. is going to, is ends up trapping whatever uh, you just get stuck there. Yeah, like you, you, something gets trapped, and now yeah, you get stuck, and yeah. you're stuck. Yeah, we, we, dis we discussed on a previous show doing, I believe it was called the Pomodoro Technique, where uh -huh. it's like you you, take you have this alternating pattern of, of doing your thing at work, and then you take a break every 25 or 30 yeah. minutes or whatever it was for 5 or 10 minutes just to get out of that static yeah. position. Yes. Um, that way you're not maintaining like a seated posture with a forward head, you know, round, right. round thoracic spine yeah. uh, for 8 hours straight. You know, you're, really, you're getting yeah. a break every twice, twice an hour. <clears throat> and and it, when you go back and actually like, so people stand up and they realize it and all of a sudden this is uncomfortable and they're really tight. And then it's like, Oh, I got to work on my posture. So they just throw their shoulders back yeah. and then they throw their low back into, you know, in a, too much extension. And 
without the ability to get rid of the stress in the body or just down regulate a little bit you're never going to get there there's no there's no way that you're going to find that good posture be able to get overhead until we start yeah well, yeah stress. it starts it starts with the breathing so as much as i you know like probably when i graduated pt school i was like okay yeah breathing's important but but yeah corrective exercise is way more important <laughs> well actually <laughs> it is the most important thing it's like the center it's the it, it it's allows our core of the core which is the diaphragm and pelvic floor to work more efficiently the core of the core i like that yeah i mean core is such a i don't even like using that word but because people think abs you know and they think like low back mm -hmm. but i'm talking like the breathing muscles your diaphragm uh which is up here <laughs> your pelvic floor <laughs> I was like pointing to the wrong area <laughs> uh the diaphragm which sits underneath your rib cage and your pelvic floor which sits in that pelvic bowl so like if you're you know, if your ribs are flared, go ahead and touch your ribs right now, the front of your ribs. Are there any that are kind of just sticking out a little bit? You might notice, because just based on human movement, a lot of times we, we bias right, so you might have a little bit of a left rib flare. Um, I've noticed that with a lot of jujits. That, that definitely happened to me. That was, that was yeah. one of the first things you fixed. For a long time, I thought that, I thought that my left scapula was, was like super elevated, or maybe I was just like, like yeah. well, there was something wrong where, where – it was very obvious that my, my shoulders were at different heights and then my neck was kind of kinked, yeah. kinked one way. And I didn't really recognize at the time that it was actually just because I was side bending a little bit yes. and I was popping my left rib. So now I consciously all, yeah. all the time am, am pulling my left ribs down and it flattened out my shoulders and it made my neck where it went straight up and down yeah. instead of slightly to the right and then slightly bending to the left. Yeah, I, I have the same issue as you mm. being a pitcher, right-handed pitcher. Like I'm used to like hanging out, you know, for a long time. Like it's been a while since I've been, but it's, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that, hey, I can change this. Like, I can actually. Oh, yeah. uh, but I had a, a left rib flare, too. Um, a lot of us do. So the thing is, like, just being aware that, okay, if, you, if your <laughs> ribs are sticking out at all, like, then obviously your ribs aren't, your, your diaphragm sits underneath that. It's not lined up with your pelvic floor, which means when you breathe in, all of that air is just going to go into the upper chest, upper lobes of the lungs. Right, you're losing, you lose power, and you lose power. Yeah. So, like, you're gonna get less oxygen into your body. So it means less work capacity, less force generation, all that kind of stuff. But you're also not gonna be able to decompress the spine and like protect it when you breathe in. Mm -hmm. And all the, also like with the shoulders, we kind of do this fun test in seminars. Like, I test people. I watch their breathing. Like first, I test their hamstring length and then their internal rotation of their shoulder. Right, without them breathing. Without with them breathing, but not like, can, you know, I don't teach them the cool breath technique. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then, like, of course, you always see a limitation in the hamstring. Unless they're hypermobile, you always see a limitation. Like, who's the stiffest dude here? You know, or lady, whatever. Um, test their hamstring, test their shoulder. Yep, limited. Then you just get them finding neutral spine, breathing deep, belly, then chest. So kind of diaph deep diaphragmatic breathing. Retest. After five breaths, four second inhale, four, four second exhale, definite difference, 15 to 20 degrees usually, and even in the shoulder. So it's just like being able to learn to breathe efficiently means this, the muscles of the spine can actually work more efficiently. Mm. And it is the one trick, tool, medicine that you can use to calm the nervous system down. A lot of times our tightness comes from, like our tightness in our thoracic, our tightness in our shoulders, our neck we feel, comes from a nervous system that's protecting and so if you just let it go, like learn to like li align yourself, learn to like activate, you know, the right musculature with the right position of your spine, you, you don't have to stretch more. Actually, you just need to move better mm -hmm. and learn how to breathe more deeply. And then you might find that these emotions you have are like, you don't become so shallow. You know, you become <laughs> a deeper human. I you know, seriously. I agree. The, 100%. the piece you were talking about with, uh, <laughs> protecting and this really is like the per yeah. when our shoulders are raised and they're in our ears that's fight or uh, flight. The fight or flight like pose or you walk past somebody i like can walk past people and they have like yeah their shoulders are forward it's like it's a protective thing they don't want to like they're also the person that's not super open at the party yeah. and they're not confident yeah power yeah. posture yeah, the, the, what comes first you know I, I say work on both at the same time yeah work on whatever's 
you know, emotional stuff might be happening that's keeping you from be- having that confidence and, you know, be working on that posture because as you do that posture, the posture is going to impact that as well. It all works together. Yes. Yeah. We used to train this guy. He was like 75 or something like that. And he'd come in and he was just oh, like, he was just like, oh, remember this dude? I remember him. No, and, uh, he, I think he was like 100. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh he was old. He was super old. I love it. And just ornery as fuck. It was great. Dude, and, uh, <laughs> stop that. Dude, couldn't stop I him. Love oh, it. yeah. He, he didn't give a shit. Do he he just wanted to train hard. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, if you put but it he, in he front was of him, so banged up, though. Yeah, so banged up. It's like he didn't necessarily have any – well, sorry, not banged up. He didn't have a bunch of injuries necessarily, but just like you'd watch him move and he just like – he just doesn't move well at all. He's just – he's totally locked down. So like if I if I laid him on his back, like his head can't touch the ground at all. Like he can't even like – he can't reach no matter what. <laughs> it's just totally uh, blocked. Just super yeah. super rounded over, et cetera. But – but no pain. I'm like, your shoulders yeah. hurt. Do, do your neck hurt? Does any? Does yeah. your back hurt? I'm does anything sure. hurt? And he was just like, Nah, I feel great. I mean, Frozen he, here. He, he's he's the kind of guy that probably just was like, Ah, yeah, fuck it. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Leave me alone, kid. But he's the kind of guy but, that probably did Everest like ten times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No big deal. But yeah, how do you explain that? Like, if someone comes in and they move so poorly, and they're just they and they have less pain than than a variety of other people that move great and are younger like is there is that just an anomaly or how how, oh. do, how does that how does that work i uh, i look at the way he lives his life he's in the gym at age 100 you know he's getting after it no matter what <laughs> most likely he's 100. had most likely, probably never stopped right? most likely he's had been, he's been injured but he gets through it quickly because his his whole resilience I remember resilience. him being hospitalized at one point <laughs> where oh, yeah. well, I don't remember no, I that just, was years ago. I, 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 I think I remember him getting hot. Like he just disappeared. Mm. Like where the fuck did Ed go or whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> whatever, I don't remember his name, but you know, I love <laughs> where it. did he go? And, and somebody's like, oh, he's in the hospital for something with his kidney. And then, you know, a month later he shows back up. He's like, let's go. And yeah. like, I was like, what the fuck, his, man? But his life, he doesn't, it's like, okay, he moves past things quickly. Right. He has pain, he moves past it. That's that's a mindset thing. Why do people stay stuck in chronic pain? Well, I think the, the mindset piece is also mm-hmm. super interesting. And you working with adaptive athletes, we have learned so much about the pain response and phantom limb syndrome. So when you have, have somebody that just moves like crap, looks like crap, but experiences no pain, there's something going on in their brain where they're able to kind of just block that out and they've adapted some sort of resilient mindset to it where they just don't well, feel it. Well, the resiliency of a human being can be dangerous as well, right? It doesn't mean it's right. Right. It just means they've adapted well, A lot of people are proud their of being life resilient. To, I'm like, eh, you're, like your resilience is causing your... Yeah, your demise. Well, and it's also too. look at the threshold. Don't take, it, don't take advantage of the resilience. Yes. No. Like, but, like it's good to have it. Tailor it. Yeah. We all, we, yeah. If we have a brain, we can experience pain. But some people um, have less brains. Uh, no, <laughs> but some people like he might move <laughs> like crap, right? He might not move well. Yeah. Um, but he's maybe he's not pushing himself also to like max stimulus every day. Right? Maybe he's not doing over. He's not overtraining. He's just moving. He's moving. He's enjoying it. Yeah, you it. don't know what's going on. Yeah. You don't know what his experience so, is. Like he, may be, he may be sandbagging the whole time. My father, you know, 6'4", like 230, he he didn't move well. And he was a super stiff dude with a forward head, you know, Catholic priest, like, in his clerk. Like, just – he – but he would go lift boulders and, you know, stuff like that. I'd be like, Teresa, I just lifted a boulder today. My shoulder's a little achy, but, you know, <laughs> like, he just moved wow. past things quickly. And – um, like he like he hit his elbow on the statue of Mary one day and like his elbow <laughs> his like I'm he serious, elbowed Mary <laughs> he elbowed Mary his elbow God. like he got bursitis in his elbow and he's like there's this like red hanging thing off of his yeah. elbow and I'm just like does that hurt Dad? And he's like no well it's good <laughs> and so some people's pain tolerance right uh, pain pathways are coming from the brain how we and how we respond to the environment, how we interact with the environment, our, le- our level of awareness. Like, we're all pretty aware of movement. So I, I'm very aware of, like, when th- something feels uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable. It's not pain. Um, I'm also aware, like, okay, when I externally, you know, if I externally rotate my hips or I don't externally rotate enough, it feels kind of funky on my knees. Mm-hmm. I'm aware of that. Some people don't have that level of awareness, and that's actually okay. It's just they've, 
they've been able to adapt. They move well. Their body, there's no threat to the way they move. Their brain doesn't right. perceive any threat. If this guy was about ready to go do a bunch of fucking snatches at body weight, he probably would feel it over time. Yeah. I just got a visual right? of but him doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but he's not yeah. doing that. Like he's working within his capacity that he knows. Yeah. And so that's awesome. I think there's something to be taught, learned from that. And also like his ability to just get back after it. Like, think of people who have chronic pain. Like, I'm talking chronic pain where, woe is me, my life sucks, like, I'm in pain, pain totally. is my life. Well, that's their whole, that's, they've, they've, somewhere down the line, that's like the way they were raised or the way they've developed. It's a reality and, that was created. And maybe they not can by change them, it. But, yeah. they, but they can, you know, it's a reality that's created, maybe not by them, but they are responsible for it now. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a interesting uh, shift with my relationship to pain in the last year. And that is not regretting the action that created the pain in the first place. So if something happened where, you know, maybe Doug slams my hand in a car door. Could have happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's still this time is, if you fiction, haven't. Fictional stories about the car. <laughs> <huh? laughs> Doesn't have to be this afternoon. <laughs> still, you can still feel the, the, oh, yeah. the bone. I almost cut my hand up one time. <laughs> <laughs> the door went all the way he shut. It was a trunk. It the was trunk a, went all the way shut. The trunk went all the way to shut and I go, open the door. Open the trunk. <laughs> Open the trunk. He's like trying to find it the button. Was, it wasn't my car. It's the first time I ride it. I was just like, ah, fuck, fuck, fuck. How do you open it? <laughs> my friend who owned the car is going. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. just oh freaks out. Everyone freaks out. They're like, no, my hand's uh, actually like, in here. Like, get, get my hand out of the fucking car. <laughs> we were about to take a red oh eye to God. Atlanta. Oh yeah, and I was, like, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> we're about to go to ER. Well, yeah, we're trying to get on a flight where we have to be there that night. And I'm like. <laughs> Put ice on it. <laughs> I'm on the plane. It was fine. We'll be good. So uh, those cookies they really help you get through some shit. So <laughs> nobody no, like uh, my my relationship to pain shifted at some point where I stopped. It was this summer I stopped dwelling on because I I recognized I was like why do why is, do I not hurt like I used to? And part of it is like I take better care of myself. But in an instance like that, we went and ran the Spartan Beast, and I was just like. Mm. This is things that used to really bother me, and I realized that I used to dwell on the thing that caused the pain in the first place, and I would, I would regret, like, oh, I can't believe I would beat myself up over it, and I would just, my consciousness would be on the thing that created the pain, yeah. and that was what was causing the suffering, and then yeah. after that, all of a sudden, my pain just, like, I got over stuff a lot faster, physically, yeah. That's a lot of the behavior stuff that we talk about because so many people just harp <coughs> on, oh, oh, this hurts. There's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. We just need to figure out what caused it. And yeah. that's a look kind of internally. Maybe it's something mental, emotional. Um, it's probably some sort of movement pattern involved, but there's nothing wrong with you. You weren't born with this shoulder that won't go overhead. Yeah. You all the things that we were talking about, you have been practicing this poor movement. And then because the pain showed up, then you feel bad for yourself. And it just gets into this cycle of mm -hmm. um, and like a, a downward spiral. But there's nothing yeah. wrong with people. There's nothing. No. You can't regret whatever I like walking around you. the world that way, though. You know, looking at people at the grocery no, store. People do that. There's something wrong with them. I yeah. must go to Thrive Market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go to Thrive. No, but also, <laughs> uh, so the pain is subjective. Too, we know right. right so it's everyone really experiences it differently like someone who's been in a traumatic accident who lost their leg um, may experience different if they were born without a leg right totally. so their their ability to um, cope with life might be a little bit different their road to being pain-free might be different all that stuff so I think that's something we have to remember movement is objective we can say are is your spine mm, straight mm. are you creating torque you know are you breathing well pain is not it's very personalized. So your buddy is probably just like a hard charger, pain, no pain. You know, like he probably does experience some discomfort, but it's like, I'm not going to focus on it because there's better things to focus on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take cool. a break. And when we come yeah. back, I want to talk about how we can figure out what exactly is going on that's causing the shoulder, shoulder pain. pain. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks for watching the show. If you'd like to learn more about how to improve your snaps, clean, and jerk, we have a free 55 page ebook you can get at flightweightlifting.com. It has sampled programming specifically for weightlifting, uh, weightlifting how to technique videos, and other tips on how to improve all of your lifts. Go to flightweightlifting.com and you can download that ebook for free. Download it now. And we're back. You sound good. And yeah. we're back. Oh, yeah, you've got. Thanks. Yeah, 
even though you've got a little bit of something going on, you came in, you're crushing it. This is the, you know, as many times as I've talked to you, this mm -hmm. is the best I've ever seen you uh, as far as content goes. You're just oh, crushing it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you just thank coming you. in and knocking it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, so people are experiencing shoulder pain. We talked a lot about uh, stiffness in the thoracic spine, the neck. And, uh, and how that ends up in the shoulders. But how do I find out why I'm jacked up? How do you find out why you're jacked up? Yeah, like, like, like well, not me. But, you know. Like everyone else, yeah, their yeah. brother. Everyone is not me, you know. <laughs> so, well, one of the things is we have, so Anders and I, uh, well, we, we started this, we had the low back fix. We have the knee fix. I mean, we got to do the shoulders too. Like, it's a big area that people ask about. Because when they're on the low back program, or people that come see me, they're like, well, my shoulders hurt too. And while the low back program isn't necessarily, we do whole body movements on it, um, it kind of identifies these issues with the shoulder too. So we have this program we created, the Shoulder Fix. And uh, if you want to know, like if, if your shoulders are bothering you, then I would say freaking do the Shoulder Fix. Like you're going to be assessed, right? You're going to learn how to assess yourself. That's one thing that's nice. We're trying to give power back to the people with the program in the sense of with all the programs we've created, like give people a chance to like work on it themselves, test themselves, work on it. And then if for some reason it doesn't work, which 89% of the time it does, um, because most of the injuries that come to us are preventable and movement pattern issues, uh, then go see someone about it. But but the nice thing is if you sign up for the program, you're going to get assessed. You're going to learn how, what, like, what motions of the neck I'm limited in, what motions of my thoracic spine am I limited in, how is my shoulder blade moving. You're going to be learning that about yourself, and then you're going to be like on this program that's identifying and working on key areas that you need to work on, neck, thoracic spine, scapula, maybe even a little bit of the ankle because the ankle can also affect the shoulder. Right, yeah. We're working on, and then we're putting you on a strength program that's focused on slowing you down, doing a little rehab on the shoulder, but, like, making you effing strong, too, at the same time. But not like um, you can explain that piece. It's, we don't care about PRing every day. We care about, like, longevity. maintaining the body and longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, I'm definitely curious about that. Like, if you have a hurt shoulder, how do you still maintain performance? Like, how do you still stay strong while you're being conservative with your shoulders? Especially for overhead strength. So there's a couple of different ways to get strong, and one is to continue increasing load. Or you could go the other way and get rid of all the dysfunctional movement patterns so that you're moving more efficiently. Um, and that's a lot of what we do. So One of those sounds smarter. Yeah, <laughs> the eliminating the problems yeah. is a much easier thing to me as well because there's so many things that you can do to just clean up you're already like you know people you mentioned Murph earlier how many people come in and they the kipping pull up and then the next thing you know there's all kinds of issues going on it's like well if we can learn how to stabilize the shoulder if you can the number of people that when you get them on a bar and it's part of our assessment process just hanging from a bar like a bilateral bar hang if you can't engage your lats doing scap pull ups you should never do a kipping pull-up. Mm. And now you have people that are using their hips to throw themselves over a bar, and then you've got 185 pounds, 200 pounds coming down on a lat that is not capable of handling that eccentric load. And Yeah, their grip's strong enough to, to keep them on the bar. Their hips are strong yeah. enough to fling them up overhead, but then when they come down, they're just, like, yanking their shoulders out of socket. Yeah. Momentum. You, you don't have the strict it. strength to get over the – yeah. So yeah. that's – Yeah, walk, in, walk into the gym it. and just – there's somebody in the class yeah. doing it. Yeah. So that's not everyone that does kipping pull-ups. No. That, that's just the, – right. these certain, a, there are certain people that just shouldn't be doing cool, it yet. It looks cool, and people want to do it, and they want to perform. And without the proper training background or without understanding – the gradual process to how you get to a high level skill movement, um, you're going to you're going to run into some issues. And I think that that's the thing that's so awesome about the program is, yes, we could hand you these things and say, oh, go do this corrective exercise and you'll feel better tomorrow. Well, then you show up to the gym and same problem. You go up, you haven't really connected all the dots. But as an educational program, you're going to get in and the assessment really is going to show you, oh, I'm lacking range here. So what do I do now? Well, instead of just go do this exercise, like we're going to give you a strength program that's going to challenge you through movements, and you're going to find out where those problems are. Um, 
one of the simplest things you can do is just buy, work work on the um, asymmetries that you have going on in your body. So many people are right side dominant and they don't have strength in the left arm. So you get into some bilateral deficit issues and just a simple pull up. Maybe you're pulling, you know, 75% of your body weight over the bar with your right arm. Well, once you start adding a little bit of load, a little bit of volume to that, you're going to run into some serious problems. I think, uh, I think it was my friend Max who pointed it out. Oh, maybe, somebody, maybe it wasn't him, but I was doing pull-ups, and then I was, like, pulling just a little to the right. Yeah. Oh, you know what it was? Yeah. I, I was getting some work done. They go, do you, when you, someone asked me, they were just looking at me. Next time you do pull-ups, see if you're going to, to the right. Yeah. And I got and uh, and I had someone watch me, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're a little to the right. It might have been Doug. I had you look at me, and I was like, and confirmed and simply just getting on the rings and, and even at the top of a kipping pull up where it's a fast movement i yeah. was i was yeah, yeah. Doing and that. you can see people's mm. body when they get into that circular motion how the circle looks not they're not facing forward the entire time and their body comes down um but just simply getting on the rings is a really easy way to figure that out too because as soon as you take the bar away it's like this fixed object and now you've got kind of two lateral or unilateral movements that you're pulling at the same time, like you're going to feel those because that ring is going to start to pull itself out. Um, it's going to get away from your body with your strong side. So there's just, there's endless ways that we can figure out um, in the program through movements and just challenging different positions where the weaknesses are, where the asymmetries are. And then you have this system of building. So, you know, structural balance, eliminate the asymmetries, find out where they are and start building on them. Then once we've kind of gotten rid of the asymmetries, layering on some strength training, developing tissues that are actually healthy, uh, mobile, yeah. with the stability work and the breath work, and then adding power to it. So, you know, it doesn't need to be a jillion kipping pull-ups, but we can start to add some power movements where we're using that in a much more dynamic, intense um, range of motion. And then... Um, the conditioning piece and how long can we maintain these quality movement patterns. Um, so the, the entire system from assessment to the end of the eight weeks, you're really getting a super deep dive into understanding shoulder pain, how you assess it so that when you go forward, maybe there's a little nick. We're, no one's perfect. We're always going to have these little nicks and dings, whether it's shoulder, low back, you're going to have, but you need to have this education system, this encyclopedia of Oh, I've been here before. Oh, if I just kind of use this technique or if I slow things down a little bit and I focus on where the, where the you know, missing range is or where the missing strength is, it's some mid-range of motion. Now you have this education platform that you can find out where your problems are and fix yourself. There's so many things that you do in the program that people think going into the PT office, they're like, waving this magic wand and it's like no we're, we're all humans we're all capable of learning and what you've put together in your assessment and through the the in the clinic which we call it um and just showing people like getting rid of the curtain it doesn't need yeah. to be this <coughs> thing that's hidden information like you should know how to assess your own body and then have a plan to get healthy yeah we wanted to show people like i i I truly believe this. I think this has happened working with the adaptive athletes. It's like I, what I've learned through years of experience, what Anders have learned, like we like, it's, it's nice to be able to give it away so people can help themselves. Um, and I kind of, you know, through working one-on-one, -on -one, it's like, well, I'm helping this one person with their shoulder and they like had a light bulb go off. So how many more people can I help? And honestly, a lot of the things I did with them, if I just taught them via yeah, video, like let's say they were in, you know, another country or across the state, like across the country, I, I would want to be able to help and it'd be a good enough coach with good enough cues to help that person help themselves right in their own home. And so that's kind of like the basis why we created this too in these programs is because I feel we're good enough coaches and engaging enough coaches to be able to, and good enough practitioners to know how to help someone in the comfort of their own home, learn about their own body and realize like, and me being able to explain it in a way that makes sense to the layperson. It's not like I'm using like jargon from my encyclopedia of anatomy or, you know, Gray's anatomy. I'm like, I'm, I'm using language they understand. So it's like, what's okay. Test your neck, test your mid back. And I'm showing videos and we're showing, we're giving them written audio, like all that stuff to help them learn and then giving them a program to make them slow down to, so they can eventually like if they want to lift more later, great, but at least they've learned how to where their weaknesses are.
Yeah. So it, it's a progressive program that's going to help you get stronger in the long run. Um, a lot of people, we find the behavior side, it's like, oh my God, I got to slow down. Like this is a progressive program. You guys have talked to Christopher Summers, right? Before, mm-hmm. do not like his programs can be really effing boring and simple, but they're fundamental. Like they're focused on the fundamentals, and that's what gets of, people the best. I've done a lot of that, and it, it really, you it's, know, filled a lot of gaps that were that existed. So what yeah. happens is though, when you start to do, you know, like we have morning routines, the same morning routine most mornings. I like to do certain things. That sets me up for deliberate practice in my day. You do the same things for the things that you need to work. I do the things based on the things I need to work on. Mental clarity, right? Um, Down regulation of my uh, nervous system for the day. Like I want to go into the day with a calm, no matter what's going on, with a calm state of mind. For the body, like you learn on this program what you need to do for your shoulder. So this is a deliberate time to practice working on your shoulder and other movements for eight weeks while you heal so you can get back to doing the other things you love. A little bit better, actually. So you can use this pain as fuel to learn about your body. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, you're going to become stronger mentally. Behaviorally, you're going to be so proud of yourself for, like, taking that time to, like, actually slow down to work on it. Um, and other, you're going to find other things in your life benefiting. Like, that's kind of the, the beauty of this is, like, yeah, we're working on your body. But the mind piece is probably the most the thing we're most proud of with this is, like, mm. when you slow down the body and you pay attention to your movement – how much more clear are you during your day? How much more focused are you in hanging out with your loved one or working, right? I think I've, I've set up deliberate practice work times during my, during my week when I do, so most of the program I do is pretty slow as well. Like I move slow and sometimes I do Olympic lifts, but they're never like the first thing I do in the day. They're like at the end of the workout. Um, <clears throat> It benefits me in the work I do later and the mm-hmm. things I do with my family. Yeah. You're looking at it from a more of a whole systems yeah. approach. And I think a lot of times people think about just the workout yeah. and not the entire day. Yeah. And maybe even look at your entire week when you're figuring out what, in what order I'm going to do things. We've yeah. gotten labeled like the, the slow strength coaches. Because we tell people to slow down so much. We're gonna get you a sign. Yeah, we're slow. You know, like they, it's it's like the big joke, and everyone like, oh, they're just gonna talk we're about their breath s- again. But sign up outside. <laughs> yeah, slow, slow coaches. Slow wanna, coach. Want to add a half second to your forty? <laughs> yeah, sign yeah my exactly. Well, <laughs> the other thing, my my but answer to that would be like, do you want to enter rare air well, of being healthy? And, and yeah. what I was gonna <laughs> get about the um, <laughs> the the behavior patterns is like no one. Until you've slowed down and seen where all the problems are and the holes that you need to plug, you will never understand because you just go, 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 go. And then one day you're going to chill out (laughs) and you're going to go, yeah, yeah, you're like, you're going to hit the end and you're going to go, well, what do I need to do? Like, I can't keep dealing with this shoulder pain. Oh, well, I need to slow down a little bit. And then once you finally slow down and downregulate your nervous system and have this clear outlook on life and realize where this pain's coming from it's like oh and then you start to get stressed out again you're like i need to back this up a little bit and get back to some more basics Mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong if you're listening to this and you're like well i'm a competitive athlete i'm a competitive spartan racer so are we right we've done i i cannot wait to kick ass on the next spartan race i go on however let's do it january 27th where at i got i got coupon codes for you and doug and me we all run the super Uh, let's do it excuse me you can't run. You're feeding me. babies. I can run when I'm feeding a child. <laughs> bring bring <laughs> Magnus, 30 pounds. Take him with you. 35 I don't need pounds. to carry him when I'm running a We'll bring race. a camera. <laughs> I'll carry a two-pound camera. You carry the child. 35 pounds. He'll, he'll, he'll be cheering for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. All, right, all, right, all right. We'll all do the race. I want to do the race. Yeah. Right. I'm, a, I, I'm a competitive Spartan racer. Ask Are Joe you? to Sena. Yes. Okay, yeah. let's do this. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. You've been um, at the World Championships before, right? Yeah. yeah. Where oh, is it? I had no idea. I was in the I didn't know you were into that. Yes. Oh. I ran. So it's all new to me now. <laughs> one, so I. New Shit, podcast. I, I, I know who I'm getting. I'm uh, I ran in the elite division at World Championships. So. I signed up for the elite division, too. <laughs> Slow as fuck in the elite division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last place. I heard you guys. <laughs> Hunter McIntyre beat I, me by a day. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter was my coach, so I was training oh, him. Uh, I was, he was training me. I was doing. Um, I was helping him with his knee. I'm gonna. Pl- anyway. I'm gonna plug Hunter McIntyre's Instagram Hunter Mac- account right now. The best. Oh. <laughs> He's the, the, the sheriff. sheriff. Unreal. 
Yeah. No, but if he you want to kill up it, he wakes up like that. He does. Oh, I know. We I've, went to I've a retreat. Yeah, yeah, he is nuts. I've stayed oh, yeah. with him on like a normal weekday. The next morning, he's like, I'm waking up. I'm like, mm. <laughs> he's like, just got back from a ten mile run. I think <laughs> I'm like, what the we fuck? We went to we he's went to a re- yeah we went to a retreat up in Malibu with him, and you're like, you go to these retreats. It's like we're gonna start off with a hike, and you think it's gonna be like four miles, twelve miles. Like twelve miles later, yeah. he was like, part two coming up. <laughs> we're As like, we what, do, like, what do we do now? Yeah. We're dying. <laughs> no, he's he's so funny, and I had a good time um, when he was training when we were training together and sharing ideas and I was more on the rehab and he was yeah. giving me very high volume workouts. <laughs> um, but if you want to crush it, you can, you know, you just need to learn more about your body, more about movement to help you get better yeah. for whatever you want to get back to doing. Like it doesn't mean your life is over. Like people talk about dramatize. Like it's life it seems to be like people get up in arms when they're in pain. It's like, use it as a time to learn and then crush it. Yes. And I think the the big takeaway though, get to shrugged. Yes. Dot the knee fix dot com or shoulder, shoulder fix dot co. She's blocking my sweet sign back there. Shrugged. Shrugged dot, dot shoulder fix dot, dot co. Got it. It's gonna be awesome. Get in there, but get assessed. Learn all these fun techniques that we've been talking about, and um, we're gonna make you stronger. We're gonna eliminate all the asymmetries. We're going to get you back from pain to performance. Yes. It's going to be in a much more mindful way and changing a little bit of behavior patterns, getting you more present in your workouts so that you don't have to come hang out with us all the time anymore. Yeah. But that's cool yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to get you healthy. Yeah. Excellent. We do. All right. And we Instagram, care about you. Should we be following you on Instagram or anything yeah. like that? Um, yeah, you can follow me. My name is Anders Varner on all the things your movement RX on Instagram is our business movement RX with her PT clinic. And Teresa Larson. There it is. The one and only. And, oh. uh, come to the website shrugged.shoulderfix.co. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And uh Doug and I are expanding our body of work. So Doug's, are. G- Doug's gonna be doing some seminars, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be doing some seminars coming up. Uh, I don't have anything scheduled at the moment, but uh, just for the moment, keep your eye out. Uh, maybe even do some seminars with these guys yes. down the line. But yeah. uh, I've gotten away from from doing seminars and live events and, and coaching large groups of people since we haven't been uh, running the gym day to day for the last couple of years. Really been focusing on business, and I really miss it. So uh, I'm gonna be nice. doing some seminars coming up here in the very near future. So keep an eye out for that. Yep, yep. And cool. I've got I've expanded into my other show, the Bledsoe Show. So just head over to the Bledsoe Show dot com and check that out. And I'm running around doing some uh seminars too. But Sweet. we'll see what happens with that. I think you'll like ten thousand interviews. Yeah. Ten thousand interviews. Whoa! Yeah, I made a commitment. Yeah. To ten thousand interviews. You don't have that many lifetime. words. You're gonna run 10, out. Yeah. Nice. You're gonna run out of words. Well, they're interviews. Yeah, well, I, I just turn on the microphones and let this person talk. <laughs> I don't need them. I don't need the words. So, uh, yeah, make sure to go over to iTunes. Give us a five-star review, positive comments, and uh, follow us on all the things. Cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks, cool. guys. Awesome. Thank, you, Thank guys. you, guys. You bet. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the show. If you like the show, which I know you did, please go share it on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever social media channel you happen to be loving at the moment. Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr, Tumblr, share it on Tumblr. Sure.